Hi, this is Ed. I hope you all are having a good day today. Today I have a very important message to bring to you. You know, there is so much deception going on right now. Uh, I believe the our enemy knows that his time is getting short and he's doing everything he can to deceive the bride of Christ. And it is very important for you to be able to discern the messages that you listen to, no matter whether they're on YouTube, TV, in a church, wh wherever. Um, you have to have discernment to recognize if it is from God or if it is not from God. And I'm going to read a few scriptures with you all today that uh, talk about these false teachers and false prophets. I'm not going to give any names because I don't feel that that's appropriate to do. But uh, the point is that you'll be able to recognize if it is a true teaching from the Lord or not. And we have to test it against the Word of God. Uh, so I'm going to read a few scriptures here. I'm going to give you some comments uh, along with these scriptures. And uh, like I say, this is a very important message. So please uh, try to listen to it all the way through. And if you need be, you can replay it and uh, listen to it again. So first I'm going to read from Jeremiah chapter 23. I'm going to read verses 1 and 2, 15 and 16, and 30 through 32. And I recommend you read the whole chapter because it discusses false teachers and prophets. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people, ye have scattered my flock and driven them away. And have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets, Behold, I will feed them with wormwood, and make them drink the water of gall. For from the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness gone forth into all the land. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain, they speak a vision of their own heart, and not out of the mouth of the Lord. Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words every one from his neighbor. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say, He saith. Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them, and cause my people to err by their lies, and by their lightness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. Now it talks about pastors here and, and uh, false prophets that are teaching lies. And uh, some of them are, are say, teaching false dreams. Uh, and, and it says here that they will be severely judged. You know, there are many self-appointed prophets today. And I would venture to say that most of them are not called by the Lord. They are just, like I said, self-appointed prophets. And something very important to take note of is not every dream is from the Lord. You know, just because you get a dream, even though it may seem to have some spiritual significance, it could be a dream from the enemy. You know, the enemy does give us dreams many times. You know, just think about it when you've had a nightmare. You know, if you've had a nightmare, that's certainly is not a dream from the Lord. So first we must discern if we're having dreams whether it is something from the Lord or not and then we need to ask him if it is something he wants us to share with others or keep to ourselves. For some dreams he doesn't want us to share with anyone. So keep this in mind is very important. Uh, now I want to read Ezekiel chapter 13 verses 1 through 3. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel, that prophesy, and say unto them, that prophesy out of their own hearts. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Woe unto the foolish prophets, that follow their own spirit, and have seen nothing. You know, many hear, instead of vo words from the Lord, they're hearing the voices in their own spirits. And I'm not coming against anyone that gives words from the Lord. Some, I do believe, are accurate and do come from the Lord. 
I'm talking about the majority of people here. The majority are just prophesying words from their own imaginations. They do not come from the Lord. Uh, and some are hearing the enemy's voice. You know, same with the dreams. You know, just because you feel like you're getting a word from the Lord doesn't mean it's coming from Him. You have to test it with the Scriptures, and you have to pray about it and ask Him to reveal to you if it's truly from Him or not. Uh, and then also, we, we are to test the spirits in all things, and primarily through the Word of God and also through prayer, just asking the Lord to reveal that to us. Now I want to read Amos chapter 8, verses 11 and 12. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and they shall not find it. A famine of hearing the true words of the Lord doesn't mean you can't find the words of the Lord. It's just that they're scarce. The true words of the Lord. There are many words going around today, but like I say, many of them aren't from the Lord. Uh, in verse 12, if you look at it in the Septuagint, which is most likely the translation that Jesus and his disciples read, it's a very old translation, much older than the King James Version. Uh, it has a very different meaning as well for this verse. That's why it's important to sometimes look at the Septuagint for the Old Testament passages. Uh, in the Septuagint, it says that the waters will be troubled from sea to sea, which is much different from the King James Version, which, which says they shall wander from sea to sea. You know, being troubled and just wandering is, is two completely different meanings. And this goes along, uh, if you read it in the Septuagint, with Luke 21, 25, uh, with talking about the waves and the sea, sea roaring. So, you know, this is an end time scripture here, uh, talking about last day's events. So whatever Bible translation you use, make sure you let the Holy Spirit lead you into all truth and many modern translations are, are in error in a lot of ways and I want to show you something here that I just discovered recently I have an ESV Bible which has a pyramid right in the middle of it how interesting I wonder who had some influence on printing this Bible I've read this Bible a lot. I've recommended it to some, but I'm not recommending it anymore because the more I read it, I see that it leaves out some things in the scriptures. And even though some passages I like still, but there's a lot of them that are not accurate. So we must be very careful, even if we're reading the King James, which is most popular, because like I said, here the Septuagint shows that the King James is not always accurate either in its translation. We must take it to the Holy Spirit and ask him to reveal us the truth. Uh, and I, I heard a fellow YouTuber recently doing a video, and that's one of the main reasons I'm doing this video. <clears throat> the Lord requires of us what we know. What we don't know is not required. But if we see others teaching in error, and we know that some that, that we have an influence on are prone to watch their videos and also be led into error, we must warn them. And that's what I'm doing here. Anyway, this YouTuber was teaching about uh, going back to our Hebrew roots. You know, this, this is a false teaching. I almost got led astray by this uh, not too long ago myself until the Holy Spirit showed me things in the Scripture that prove that there is a big difference between the Gentiles and the Jews. Even though we're both, the, gen, the Gentiles are grafted into the vine of the, that the Jews are a part of, but there are major differences between us as well. And I will show you that in scriptures. Uh, 
And this is the era of the church of Smyrna, the persecuted church. You can read of seven churches in the book of Revelation. Uh, also, I have a video on the seven churches. You may want to watch that. Um, this is the persecuted church, and it is the one who claim to be Jews, but are not. And the Lord says they are of the synagogue of Satan. I want to read you that scripture. It's Revelation 2, verse 9. Let's see. I know thy works, thy tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. That's very serious accusation the Lord is bringing against them. And that's basically what these people are doing when they say we need to get back to our Hebrew roots. That is a teaching of the synagogue of Satan. Uh, not all of this church obviously practice this, but the, those that are Ju Judaizing Christians, uh, I believe they will also go through the tribulation period because of their error, and they're leading others into error as well. And um, they may be in prison and beheaded, just as those in the Church of Smyrna had to, to deal with back in uh, the early days of the church. Uh, also, the synagogue of Satan takes on two forms, basically. That of Juda Judaizing Christians, and uh, the secondly, replacement theology. And the Judaizers say we must keep the Mosaic Law and the Sabbath. Replacement theology says the church has replaced Israel or is interchangeable with Israel. And also, um, they teach basically a post-tribulation rapture. Some are mid-trib, but most teach a post-tribulation rapture. Uh, and in Colossians 2, 16 through 17, I want to read that one. This uh, also clears it up. Uh, let's see. I thought I had Colossians here. Okay, Colossians 2. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Now, see, he's telling us right there, we... We don't have to observe the Saturday Sabbath, you know, because the Christians in Acts chapter 20, uh, verse 7, talks about Christians worshiping on Sunday and not on Saturday. If you want to worship on Saturday or observe the Sabbath, that's fine. But don't tell others they need to do so, for that is error. Um, also, Acts 15, uh, 24 28 and 29 I want to read for as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words subverting your soul saying you must be circumcised and keep the law to whom we gave no such commandment for it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things that ye abstain from idols from meats offered to idols and from blood and things strangled and from fornication from which if you keep yourselves you do well fare ye well. So again, they're saying you don't have to observe these uh, Jewish customs in the Mosaic Law. And Titus 1 verses 10 and 11 says that people who are these Jude Judaizing Christians saying we need to get back to the Mosaic Law and our Hebrew roots, it says that these people must be stopped. Their teaching must be stopped. Jesus fulfilled the law with his death and resurrection. We are to follow Jesus and him alone. We must test everything we hear and see if it lines up with the word of God. So I hope this message has uh, brought some light to some of you. I know some of you are new in the faith, uh, and in particularly those that are new in the faith, it's easy to be led into error, but even those of us who've been walking with the Lord for a long time can get led astray if we're not very careful. So God bless you guys. Uh, take heed to who you listen to. And keep looking up. Jesus is coming soon. Bye-bye.